it's a virtual time trail. It's an amazing thing, an amazing idea actually. So we've got obviously a lot of historic buildings in the city and a lot of historic photographs and we try to bring the two things together and give people a, a trail. Lots of people like wandering around the city um, and this is a really good opportunity to bring people into the city and project images of their past on iconic buildings. The virtual time travel trail I think is a really brilliant thing for Worcester City Centre. I think it brings together all of the kind of key heritage and history buildings and it's great for the public to be able to see them all in one evening and all come together as a team to kind of provide a kind of night of heritage. It's, it's a really great idea. People love to see the history of where, you know, where they've lived all their life or, or where you know, maybe they've moved to the city. But um, things change so quickly without you really realising it. You know, by tomorrow, this is history. So time moves on really quickly and you don't notice the, the constant change in the city. So sometimes it's just nice to be able to stop and, and look back and reflect on what the city was like. I think it's, it's absolutely lovely and it's a really innovative way of looking at Worcester's history, Worcester's past and its heritage and particularly its industrial heritage. Um, and it, it's been lovely. I've been around the city and people are receiving it really well. What a great idea, yeah, it, it, you know, to use these wonderful old buildings and project all these old pictures, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I wasn't even aware of it happening tonight, we just stumbled upon it and I was blown away. I'm just delighted with it, um, you know, they're, they're just, they're so vibrant, there's so much content in there. All of the historic images are really coming to life with local people's memories alongside them. But yeah, it, it's just really exciting to see it all come to life and seeing people enjoy them on the streets as well. I think it's a great opportunity for lots of people to see lots of these buildings that aren't always open to the public or and also getting all a little bit of more history of what's going on or what has gone on in the city. For us it's fascinating watching this old footage on the film, seeing what this building itself looked like all those years ago. My name's Stuart Minchin and I, I work for the Worcester City Council and uh, Sheena asked for, um, I approached me as I'd lived in Worcester all my life and uh, if I had any memories that I wouldn't mind sharing. As Art Centre Manager for St Swithins, my role is to basically uh, curate uh, performances and arts workshops as well as work with my engagement officer to bring education and learning facilities into the environment to kind of interpret the building with music and art and get people to learn about the heritage of the building. Also have live performances, exhibitions, lectures, all kind of based around history, art and music. My role in the project is that um, I'm the manager at the museum and so I'm just I'm hosting um, the virtual time travel trail here and um, and it's been really lovely to welcome lots of visitors to the museum actually. I'm the general manager of the Royal Porcelain site and the trust that own it. Um, for us it's really important because the more people that we get coming through this area makes this a vibrant part of town but also makes people be more aware of the facilities that we've got with the, the trendy um, cafes and the museum which is you know, steep with history and this room that we're standing in today that can be used for other things so it's really important. So my role is as a project co-lead so I co-lead the Worcester Live Stories project Project. Uh, and this uh, tonight's event uh, is a kind of a bit of a culmination of, of that really sort of bringing together everyone's reactions to all those amazing photographs that we have in the collection uh, the stories that they've shared along the way um, and really sort of bringing local people together through those shared stories well I'm loving the film of the doctor ordered clay because it's such uh, a marvellous record of the 1950s here in Worcester. Um, the conditions were awful, but the skill and the co collaboration was remarkable. So the teams of such highly skilled people living in Worcester at the time, creating this wonderful work. So it's a wonderful record. I think this one that we've got at Tudor House is really magical actually. It's got some lovely images of old Worcester. It's got some really lovely domestic settings which are lovely to see and, and I think the music makes it very magical as well. So what you can see behind you is our Life in Four Minutes light and sound show. It's an interpretation of the building where it kind of plays the histories of people's lives in 
Worcester and St. Swithin's Church in particular, and it talks about the difference in time from the clock on the east end and the west end. There's four minutes difference in time, and it kind of asks you to interpret in your mind what would you do with those extra four minutes in your life. At the moment, I'm dressed as a soldier from the English Civil Wars, what the British Civil Wars, War of the Four Kingdoms, whatever you want to call it. It's 1642 to 51. But I'm also doing Napoleonic as well as um, French supper. Well, what I've seen of it so far is the film which is running behind me, and uh, it's fascinating. I love the museum now, so it's just a revelation to see it as it was then. We've got a lot of heritage buildings in the city. What we're trying to do is show them off, and show them off with the, the projections of photographs that we've got in our archives of, of the history of, of Worcester, really, so people, local people can see see their history on iconic buildings, come out and enjoy a mild evening and, and really get around a load, of, a load of places at once in one evening. It's, been, it's been an exciting idea. Um, I do, I really like, there's a lovely image of washing hanging in the garden and, and so that must be very early 20th century I'm imagining. Um, so I really like seeing um, kind of domestic settings in these photographs, that's, that's been um, really nice to see. I think it's important because it's getting all of the, the people from, you know, the county kind of just looking around all these amazing buildings and actually also getting a little snapshot of history and, and it's great to know that this is all happening in your own uh, city. People should remember their history. If, if, you, if you forget your history, you don't know where you've come from and you, you're going to repeat the same things again. You don't know where you're going. You really need to know your history, so virtual history, written history, all history is important, but virtual one is great because it gives people an opportunity to see it up and in their face. And same with the reenactments, it's a way of giving a visual presentation of history and people can look at what you do, you can explain everything and it's not all glory, it's not fighting for the fun of it. We describe the horrible bits of everything, so hopefully it discourages people in some ways, but brings them to the thing where they like to learn their history. There's not so much need or desire to actually visit places when you can get it online, which I think is a shame because you, you can only gain so much from reading or seeing pictures. If you can go into an old building, we've got lots of them in Worcester, you, you become bathed in the whole atmosphere of, of what it was like in, in times gone by, in a way that you can't any other way, in my opinion. So I guess we move forward, the technology is there for people to have a, a world of information at their keyboard, but it's no substitute for actually visiting these places and, and touching and breathing in the, the history that seeps out of the walls. It's really important to, um, to capture the, all of those, those stories and memories before they all disappear for good. I mean, you know, the, even during the course of this project, you know, there have been people that have sadly passed away that had shared amazing stories with us and we've been able to capture some of those. Um, but yeah, so, you know, obviously you only get one opportunity sometimes to, to really record those stories. Um, but it's not just that. I think it's the, you know, by sharing those photos, the, the, you know, the sense of kind of, you know, well-being that people get from that and, and just you know sort of looking at old images and you know triggering memories for people I think that's really important and, and you know the impact that can have on people's um, day-to-day day -day health and well-being. I think it's important to people in Worcester because they get to see not only memories of Worcester and um, some lovely imagery but they're obviously getting to see our museum here on Friar Street um, so it's an opportunity just to see the heritage that is on people's doorsteps really. To understand the present you need to be very aware of the past uh, and I think something like this is really helpful for that. It's been a great opportunity to kind of showcase um, historical photos of Worcester um, in slightly different ways with projecting them onto buildings and kind of overlapping them um, and listening to people's memories um, kind of on a sort of a large projection. What you know is that Worcester's, it's got a heritage, but it's not, doesn't always push it, doesn't always um, 
trumpet about it. Um, everybody knows little bits and pieces, and this is an opportunity to get around some of those some of those places in the city that we know and love, don't really know what might lie behind them. See some of those images that we remember from the past, and put the two together, and I just think that means that you know local people are getting an understanding of their local heritage and how we can move forward with it. I've lived in Worcester about 30 years. I uh, came here as a student and stayed, basically. <laughs> they say once you arrive, you never escape. Um, I've been fortunate enough to work within the heritage uh, and museum industry in the city for, for most of that time. It's been fabulous. Met my husband here and raised my children here. I spent 50 years of my life working at Worcester Museum and uh, it's great to come along and see a project like this. Uh, obviously brings back many memories of the time I spent working for the city, uh, meeting people uh, and seeing how the pe places had changed, the people changed, most of all the industries and the work had changed. I've lived in Worcester all my life so I'm uh, 44 years old. Uh, so yes, I've li lived here all of that time. I was born at uh, Ronxwood Hospital. Uh, so yeah, been here ever since. I just like Worcester for what it is. I've been to other places just visiting, but always much prefer getting back to Worcester. It's just the atmosphere of the place, the history. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Um, I've lived in Worcester all my life and I'm a big, big fan of the city that I was born in. And um, I think it probably doesn't fall on the tourist trail as much as it should do. And um, I think it's got so much fantastic history uh, and architecture. And uh, I think this will obviously help to showcase it and make the most of it. I think it's a bustling, vibrant city. Um, it, it has changed in 35 years. We love it. Being born and bred in Worcester, I never knew the museum was here. And once I got in there, absolutely amazing. Fascinating, I'd say. I've, I've learnt a lot 